Aaron Eckhart plays Frankenstein's monster. Uh, his name is Adam, uh, which was actually the name that Mary Shelley gave to the creature when she talked about him in press interviews. Um, so we thought that was a cool thing to name him. Um, Aaron's performance in the film is something quite amazing. Uh, from day one, he was absolutely committed to the role. And for a, for a character as iconic as Frankenstein, I needed an actor who was willing to just go all the way and just trust me that I was not going to make him a fool, you know, because it's very easy to kind of have in your head this like lumbering kind of zombie image of Frankenstein, and that wasn't what I wanted to do at all. And so Aaron uh, came in, he read the script, he immediately got what I was trying to do, we talked about it, and he was just on board 100%. I, Frankenstein is an epic modern day action thriller, and it takes the idea that the Frankenstein monster is still alive in our day and age, and he's still wandering the earth, looking for a purpose, looking for something, anything. And he gets caught up in this ancient war between gargoyles and demons. Gargoyles who are kind of like the, the holy warriors sent to protect mankind, and the demons who are out to destroy mankind. And uh, the demons figure out that if they can learn how Frankenstein's monster was created, they can harness that power to basically wipe out the gargoyle order and destroy mankind. And of course, all Frankenstein's monster wants is love, just wants a companion, someone to share his life with. And he's caught up in all of this, and he's asked to choose sides, and which side will he choose? So it's a big, big, fun, epic roller coaster of a movie. The movie uh, brings the monster into today's world, and uh, what's great about that is seeing how a being created 200 years ago by man uh, reacts to the world around him. You know, do people still regard him as odd or strange because he's got all these scars all over his face? And, you know, just to see how mankind doesn't change over over the time, and uh, to show that he's even more alone uh, than ever now because the people are less trusting in the world. People are, are more insular and just you know, stick with their friends. So it's it's actually a bleaker world for him in in a modern day and age. And uh, and it's fun to see a, a kind of classic character brought forward and, and put in into our world. It's fun to see. There's a very strong theme of good versus evil in this film. It's very much, there's the gargoyle order, which uh, is created by the archangels, and they are sent down from heaven to watch over us. And that's why they're on all the uh, rooftops of all the cathedrals all over the world. They're sitting there, they're actually real, and they've got their eyes down and they're looking for demons that they know are among us. And the demon horde is basically created by Satan after he falls from heaven. 666 legions of demons. 6,666 demons in each legion. 66 demon princes, of which Nibirius is one. Well, one of the things I really wanted to do with I, Frankenstein was create a world that audiences have never seen before. I, I as a film goer, I'm always looking for something new, something different, something that uh, I can sink my teeth into. And so I just started writing about this world uh, full of gargoyles and demons and you know, cathedrals and cities and histories and battles. And, and uh, it just became a really fun world to play in. Um, so that then extended to you know, how we designed the set. So uh, my production designer, Michelle McGay, uh, was just a genius designer. And she came up with all these fantastic designs of how the cathedral would look, and then my uh, my DP Ross Emery um, worked very closely with her on how to light it and how to how to make it all feel like a real living, breathing space. You know, which is a very hard thing to do. I Frankenstein is uh, such a great candidate for 3D because it's a whole new world that you've never seen before, and it's filled with flying creatures and and you know demons that explode into flames and the flames you know when they it's a violent uh, demons die violent deaths and so when the flames explode out of their chest like the aliens and alien <laughs> the flame rips all around like this and twirls around until it finally goes down to the ground so there are these massive battles where all these demons are getting killed by all these gargoyles and there's flames flying around everywhere and the gargoyles are flying this way and that way and it's it's just it's made for 3d you know this is the way i really really conceived it was to bring you into this world that you've never been into before and really uh 
you live in it, you know, and that's what uh, the 3D does. This is a big, epic, fun, action roller coaster of a movie. It's a Frankenstein like you've never seen before, and uh, it's just a whole lot of fun, you know. Uh, it's so many kind of different movies all rolled into one, you know, and then at the same time, what drives it, the heart of it, is this great human story about, about a guy who's looking for his purpose, looking for meaning, looking for why he was put on this earth, you know, and... Uh, and the movie is all driven by him and the choices he makes. It's a very character-driven action film, which is a rarity these days, you know. I think a lot of action films these days focus solely on the visual effects, and you've got to have a great human story, you know. I think that's what audiences re relate to first and foremost. It's what we've been telling each other's stories since we were cavemen sitting around a fire, and it's always been the human story. It hasn't been the visual effects of the world or the mythology, you know. It's always been the, the thing that connects to the heart and... Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very happy that, uh, that I, Frankenstein has this very strong beating heart to it.